Let's take a look at some players who are expected to hit free agency this season. Look at this list, okay? Mark has some notable big men on here. Who catches your eye? Justin Matabike Ooh. from the Baltimore Ravens. Had a phenomenal season. Um, I'm, I, I don't want to say flew under the radar, but they were so good in other spots that it wasn't probably as loud as it should have been. You see the numbers here, 13 sacks, 33 quarterback pressures. Boogie, you know this, how much I think that interior pressure in this league matters when it comes to trying to win championships and impacting games. And I think he's the one of those next inline three techniques to not only get a big payday, but to be super effective in each and every game that he plays in. Justin Matabike, I will have my eyes on you to get that bag, sir. Mm, can't wait to see where he ends up. Uh, Tim, Kirk Cousins in the top ten of this list. Where do you think he lands? I think he ultimately ends up back in Minnesota, and I think for a number of reasons. One, he's a really good quarterback, and I'm sure that they value that, especially after going through the quarterbacks that they went through this season and the struggles that that presented. I also believe this, coming off of the Achilles injury, that can often make people a little uneasy, both player and teams, in regards to that. Remember Jimmy Garoppolo a few years ago being injured, not fully healthy. It affected him in free agency. That's another reason why I think Minnesota just makes the most sense. They know what type of player he is. They know his health situation. I just think that that's ultimately what happens. Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins is another notable player who's going to be a top wide receiver in the free agent market this offseason. Higgins has 24 touchdowns over four seasons along with two 1,000 yard seasons and a major part of course of Cincinnati's high powered offense. Since entering the NFL in 2020, Higgins has been one of the best receivers in the league specifically on third down where he's averaged 10.3 yards per target. Pretty impressive. That's the fourth best mark in the NFL trailing only CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, and Justin Jefferson. You think about it that way, he's on that caliber, that level of receiver. Adam, what more can you tell us about the Bengals' plans for T. Higgins? I think they'd like to figure out a way to retain him if possible, Laura, and that very well could include the franchise tag, which I think a lot of people in and around Cincinnati believe will wind up on T. Higgins. If they tag him, they always could see if he can find an offer out there that maybe they can't afford, that at least they're getting compensation in return. But it's hard to imagine the Bengals are just going to let him walk in free agency and go sign with another team. That does not seem like a likely option. And when you talk to people within the organization, it certainly sounds like the most likely scenario is the franchise tag on T. Higgins. That way they can at least try to control whether or not he's back in Cincinnati for another season to try to run it back with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase once again. Yeah, it makes sense. Tim, how important is it, do you think, for the Bengals to keep T. Higgins? You don't want your you know, guys that you've drafted to leave. I just know this. When Schefter like, like, lets go of like a chuckle of like, that's not going to happen. They're not going <laughs> to let him go to free agency. It means that like, you might as well just book it. Like, that's right. not happening. <laughs> like, he's, he's been so good. He's been – and people have been trying to kind of – you know, talk their way to have him not be in Cincinnati for the last couple of years. That's just not the Cincinnati way. You drafted a really good player. You were fortunate enough to draft another wide receiver who's also really good, you know, after him. And so because of that, you want to keep that intact as long as you can. And if you are going to lose him, you have to get something for him. That's why the franchise tag, getting something in place that would maybe kind of present an opportunity for another team to give him a long-term deal, that's really the only way it makes sense. No doubt. Shefty, welcome back to the offseason because you know I'm the objector when it comes <laughs> oh, to dudes no. leaving teams and going to get their money. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Um, both of you guys obviously make sense. Like, Cincinnati can't let T. Higgins walk out the building, not only for his production, but the continuity that they've created offensively. They found a great synergy in what I believe is two number one receivers not seemingly to be disgruntled about their production and how their how their how the ball is distributed by Joe Burrow. But here's the thing. T. Higgins wants to get to a major bag. That's number one. So the franchise tag players are never happy about it. Sometimes it's a placeholder to give you more times to get a deal done. The other thing is I'm not too sure that another team won't be willing to give up something um, of significance for T. Higgins when you start talking about the number one wide receiver. Carolina, and remember I said this, 
the Kansas City Chiefs Ooh. may be in play for T. Higgins. That's really interesting considering the fact that even though the Chiefs won the Super Bowl and they found ways offensively, we talked all season long about them needing a more dynamic number one target. Imagine pairing him with Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey says he's coming back. Oh, goodness, that looking story coming out of Seattle. Adam Schefter, what more can you tell us about what's going on with Geno Smith? Well, Laura, Geno Smith has a $12.7 million clause in his contract where if he's on the roster Friday, that money becomes fully guaranteed. And the Seahawks informed Geno Smith today that he will be on the roster past Friday, thereby guaranteeing the $12.7 million in his contract. Now, he's got another roster bonus due on the fifth day of the league year, but Geno Smith makes that $12.7 million. There's no reason for the Seahawks not to pick it up. He represents strong value and obviously could be their starting quarterback. They have a new coaching staff there in Seattle, so the new coaches will have their own assessments. They'll look around and free agency the draft, see what else is available. They have Drew Locke. Now they have Geno Smith telling him today that they will keep him on the roster, thereby guaranteeing him the $12.7 million trigger in his contract that becomes due tomorrow. Interesting. Tim, do you see Geno Smith as a long-term fit in Seattle? Uh, look, I, I actually think that he can be the starting quarterback there beyond this season. I think he's that good of a player, which is why I think picking up this roster bonus of you know under $13 million actually prevents some value for the Seahawks. Look, two years ago, he threw you know, 30 touchdowns and was, uh, you know, was pretty good at not turning the football over. The number's down a little bit this season. Some of that was because he missed time, but I think he can be one of those productive players that you definitely feel like you can win with. And look, when you look a year from now, when he's due, you know, roughly, you know, just over $30 million to be your starting quarterback, that is going to look like a bargain around the National Football League. Like in some cases, it's going to be half of what other guys are making to be starting quarterbacks. So like, to say, like, can he be the long-term answer? I actually think he can because mm. the value and compensation is always going to be pretty attractive for, for Seattle in terms of this year and the following year. Yeah, I agree with Tim, uh, Boogie. And, and more importantly, like, supply and demand in this league. I think we get so caught up in trying to find the next uh, Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. It's very few of those guys. The rest of these guys are really good football players and they play the position at a very high level. But we kind of get caught up in this comparison game with the top, the upper echelon of guys that we see change the game tremendously and not not give credence or credit to guys that are playing at a high level. Gino has been a really good football player for Seattle. Tim just went through what he was able to do last year. He was phenomenal. This was a playoff football team. He played well this year outside of the injuries and the supply and demand. Like, if you're not clearly significantly upgrading these guys, then I don't believe there is a conversation about if he should be the starter long term unless something happens in training camp where a guy just beats him out. But I think Geno is a really good football player. I think he's a good quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. And look, we all know time is limited based on availability. So if you're telling me that one of these guys that's elite is going to come available and the Seattle Seahawks will be in the game, they'll have an opportunity to get them. Yeah, over the last two seasons, Geno ranks sixth in the NFL in both passing yards and touchdowns. The best thing ever is they wrote him off and he ain't right back, okay? Geno Smith with a new coordinator <laughs> and head coach in Seattle. 